this meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Mayor, will you please give us the invitation today? We want to bow with you, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together through the business of the county, Father. And we just pray right now that you uh, guide us, give us wisdom, and encourage to make the right decisions. Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So, uh, actually, well, we have a motion to second before we vote on it. I would like to add, uh, without objection, I'd like to add under uh, the report of the finance director under interbudgetary two item two A. There is uh, it, it should have been passed around to you all um, a document uh, outlining uh, some expenditures for the health department. So, without objection, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Recognition of the public, uh, Mr. Kevin Baker. Uh, Kevin Baker, 424 AB Wade Road. Um, I don't think it's a secret that I've, I'm opposed to the spending of money for the, the beer cap, but I've been doing some research recently, and my concern has shifted a little bit recently. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with devices called stingrays and their supposed um, uses to basically intercept cell phone signals. And more and more, you, you, there's credible reports out there saying that federal agencies are working with local and state law enforcement to basically allow these stingrays uh, to, to basically be used, even though our state law says you can't, um, you, you can't intercept without a, a warrant. My, my concern is this. I don't know. I looked through the grant. I don't see it in there. But there's credible reports out there that when Homeland Security and these other federal agencies come in here, they, they force the agencies to, to sign non-disclosure agreements where they won't talk about, admit to having stingrays. It, it's, it's becoming more and more documented across the United States. Tennessee is one of the states listed as where state and local agencies have and use Stingrays. My concern is, just like we were told that this, this vehicle won't be used for a military type of uh, use, we also have a Fourth Amendment in the Constitution that says you won't be able to, your, your, all of your information is, is secure. But our governments are, are getting in there and, and taking our information. I'm concerned. I'd like to know, I'd like to hear some discussion whether we've actually scrutinized it. The documentation, I'd like to hear our, our EMA and um, law enforcement people admit and say that they don't have this and that our bear cat won't be part of this whole thing. I'm concerned about it. Our civil liberties are being stolen, folks. Slowly but slowly. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Um, that's all I have on the uh, public uh, sign-up sheet. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So, so March 11th. Motion? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Um, motion carries. Uh, I have no report. Uh, Mr. Mayor. No report, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lawn, you have a extensive report today. Go ahead. Uh, the first is just the financial statement memo saying that the financial statements will be the week after county commission. We don't receive several of the uh, department's reports of the 10th, so we'll not be in time for the commission but the week following. Um, number two is the late commission. Per our private act, any department agency or company <coughs> other than the schools is to have their budget to be no later than March 1st, which is actually a full month later than under general law. In the past, when that's happened, what we've done is enter prior year's budget, and then the budget committee entertains any amendments if necessary. And that's what was done with the election commission and Agnes. Mr. Mr. Lawrence, so I spoke with, uh, just to pardon the interruption here, just so everybody knows, I don't think we need to do anything with this. Uh, I spoke uh, with uh, Judge McCormick and uh, explained to her basically exactly what you just said. That um, what we would we would treat this the same way we treated every uh, other department when they've had a late submission. Um, we'll program in uh, the uh, last year's budget uh, plus uh, cost of living as uh, the standard, which is what our finance department will will do. We won't consider her. Uh, late submission as part of that initial process, but we will. She can go ahead and brief her um, her 
her existing or her requested budget as is. She, she's already sent it to us. She can pass it out. So basically, we're going to start uh, because it was late. We're not going to ask the finance department uh, to to take a late submission. Um, we're going to treat it the same way we treated everybody else. But she'll she's going to go ahead and be prepared to present the budget that uh, she put together, which again is is exactly how we we treated the election uh, commission and others. Uh, Ms. McCormick uh, was very totally amenable to it, totally understood, and uh, no issues here. I don't know that we need to do anything with this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know, um, the next is the transfers. Item 1A <coughs> is the Sheriff's Department transfers from um, mm -hmm. basically jailers to overtime because of their current vacancies. No, we, would, we would need a vote on this no, one. Yes. need a motion? Yes. Motion. We have a motion. Second. Any discussion on this one? This is an interbudgetary transfer. It's net, net, right? Net, net, net. Just because of the vacancy. Yep. So there's no additional funds on this one or any of these, correct? Yes, sir. Any discussion on this one? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion goes unanimously. I don't B1 through. Five are the same things. Basically, based on the type of coverage of what your health insurance costs, so if somebody changes from single to employed plus one or family or any of those changes required additional funding, and these are interbudgetary transfers. Motion and move on for me. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on these? B uh, one through uh, five. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, much curious and yes. Uh, two pages 21 through 23 is the interbudgetary transfer interbudgetary transfer other than the health department and I did not see anything that struck me as unusual enough or questionable. The only one I, I noticed was that uh, 55 130 the revenue collection processing I mean I, I'm sure it's fine I just what what, it, what is that one that's when they bring in additional revenue as a cost because they outsource some of the revenue collections so there's additional cost so when they bring in additional revenue there's additional cost and it's always net yeah. out yeah what they just transferred yeah. between line items we would have asked them for additional revenue. okay all right Okay, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve. Motion. Second. Second. Any other, we have a motion and second. Any other discussion on interbridge theory? We can give people a better chance here if you want to take a little extra time to look through this one. I'll just make it. I feel like I'm saying anything, but I'll say it. Just the $16,000 in the Hitchball library cost. Obviously, that was contingent with the Hitchball paying half and half, but right now we're covering all the costs of uh, those types of payments or, or repair issues at this point while we're trying to negotiate with like, how we can take care of the library long term. Um, so that's one of those. Duly noted. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, the health department. I don't know what that is. The health department, the transfers are between ARPA line items. This is the ARPA funding that is <coughs> County's ARPA funding is used to match the state grant for the health department. Um, I believe now it's construction instead of renovation, if I'm not mistaken, but there was some questions. Anytime I do a transfer, there's questions. If it's not too late, I will stop the train transfer down here. So. Uh, I, I have, go, go ahead. Uh, motion, motion to discuss. Second. All in favor? Uh, 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 go ahead, Ms. Kwan. I, I was the one who stalled this and the reason is I had written a letter to Kim Northley, and there were certain points that, according to the agreement that was uh, made when there was there was a meeting. I'll start there. There was a meeting with architects, the state, uh, Kim Northley, Marshall Boyd, Al Hendricks, and there were certain things that needed to happen, and they seem to have just been short-circuited and I had um, brought this letter up at General Operations and was expecting an answer 
and I never got one. And so I'm kind of totally in disarray with this whole thing at, at how it has moved so quickly without any of these things being taken care of. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for that uh, that letter that I was if you want to go on, Matt, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find it and then I'll bring it back up. I guess I had one question. Oh, did anybody else have a hand raised on this one? Go ahead. So, uh, Mr. Long, I guess the question I have, and you may not be able to answer it, and I, I apologize. I should have hit you up on this one earlier. Um, is is Are there any scenarios here where we're going to like slow walk our way towards the end and put more, more into this project? The only thing that we've got right now, my understanding, is we're taking the ARPA funds to match the state grant. Mr. Northley's the one working with the Howell's Health Department, and actually, if you want to suspend the rules, Howell is in the back. I believe that's why he came. Kind of talked a few words out on the project, and also the mayor's involved in it. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. The state's agreed that any overages they're going to take care of. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear and get on the record there. I, I, that was smart, but I haven't looked at that. No changes. Okay. So, did everybody hear that last bit from the mayor? Okay. Uh, any other discussion on this one? Just for me. Uh, we just had a motion for discussion. I'd entertain a motion to. Well, go ahead. <laughs> if I may, uh, we've been told repeatedly for the last couple of months this wasn't going to cost the county any money. As it ends up at $708,000 is our contribution to the building. Uh, and that's through ARPA funds. And so you can't be both. Either we're contributing or not. The ARPA funds are our funds. And so that was that was one of my problems with what was going on. The other thing is, uh, the, in the letter I had sent, uh, at the time of the meeting that I was just referring to, Meeting notes that it had not yet been determined that the building would be demolished. If it were to be demolished, a letter stating the reasons would be required. And that letter I have never seen and I have requested it. Uh, AEI, who was awarded the contract uh, as architect, uh, they're supposed to create a budget and a schedule. That hasn't happened. Uh, the initiation of description of spaces within the building because we're taking this apparently the intent is to destroy the 4,000 square foot building that I'm not even sure I mean we're, we've been told that it would be cheaper to, to <laughs> demolish the 4,000 square foot building and rebuild a 6,000 square foot building rather than renovate a 4,000 square foot building and I, I have uh, I have questions with that. Would you like to suspend the rules? And uh, I'm sure, I'd make a motion to suspend the rules. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, who is it? Alex Oh, 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 Yes, Mr. Chairman. Also, with Hal, he's also got the state on the phone. They were unable to be here. But if y'all want to have communication with the state, you can ask any questions directly. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cool, I think you, I don't know if you've been able to hear some of Mr. Klein's comments, but uh, maybe you want to give us a brief overview and then uh, everybody can go ahead and direct their questions to you directly. Okay. This is Josh Gibson. Josh, what, I call him the, build, the construction guru for the state from Memphis to Mountain City. He's in charge of all uh, the county buildings, uh, no part of the building. Josh, what's your title? Uh, I'm just the facility specialist for the state of Tennessee. Anytime we get grant money, I'm the project manager and I oversee the project to, and help the counties from start to finish, whether it be a renovation or a new construction. And with this grant, we're building 17 new facilities from the ground up across the state. And uh, I couldn't hear really what was you guys were saying, but I did hear some concerns about whether it's a renovation or a new build. And we've got it written in the contract that it's, it's either or, whichever guy, way you guys decide to, to address it. But in my opinion, in the architect's opinion, 
that that building is in such terrible shape that you would be more cost effective by tearing it down and starting from scratch. Okay, Josh, let, let me push back a little bit on that. This is Commissioner David Klein. That building is a rectangular building with clear span trusses. So literally every wall inside could be removed without a problem. Sure. This, the so you've, got issues, uh, you've got issues with the roof, you've got issues with water, you've got issues with mold. And, and that's fine. If you want to gut it, that's what we did in Rome County. And, and I'm going to leave that up to you. But we were just looking for some additional space. And I think we got a cost estimate on, estimate on tearing it down and hauling, hauling it off. It was like four to 500000 So, you know, like I said, it's your building. You all decide how you want to do it, but I'm just giving options. Yeah, and, and, and I'm just asking for options because I'm not opposed to demolishing it and, and building new, uh, but the, the, the statement that, that we had been told or some of us had been told is that it's less expensive to build, tear down, build a new 6,000 square foot facility than it is to renovate the 4,000. And I, all I was looking for was justification for that natural number. Sure. And that's a real fine line. You've got to you got to do the math, and you got to consider the, the extra square footage that, that they really need. And then you you got to let the architect go in and the, and the HVAC engineers, mechanical engineers, and give their assessment. Um, which I think there has been some initial assessments, but nothing you know to in depth. So can I can I maybe so what uh, you may be saying here, and don't let me put words in your mouth. Is that it may may it may not necessarily be less expensive on a on a dollar by dollar basis to rebuild to tear down and rebuild, but you believe that it will be less expensive on a per square foot basis to do a well, uh, not necessarily either or. I'm just trying to get the most bang for your buck in in Sumner County. And what Hal has is a very very poorly set up clinic. That is not efficient. It's not uh, beneficial to the patients or the staff and how it is, is set up. And it all really comes down to if you're going to have to replace every bit of ductwork, every bit of the HVAC, all the mechanical, you'd be cheaper off to start from scratch. But you need an assessment from a professional architect and mechanical engineer, and I'm not that. Okay. Okay. So, so we really don't know. I mean, I understand that Hal has always talked about needing extra square footage there. So I'm not necessarily opposed to that. And we, we're only required by law to have one health department building in the county, but we this will be three. We've already got three. So I'm, I'm just, from a budget standpoint, I understand because I've spent a lot of time with Hal regarding this. I'm just trying to understand more how we got to the point we're at and it, it seems sure. like it's, it's flying quickly when we we haven't done any financial analysis which is the job of the budget committee sure and like i said we we are flying quickly we're running out of time i have to have these things built by december 31st of 2026 uh, that means all renovations and new bills have got to get moving and that, that's the reason for the push. Okay. And, and you're, absolute, you're absolutely convinced that we can't do what we need to do there in 4,000 square feet. It's got to be six. Because like well, I say, those are clear stands. Those look are at your growth compared to other counties across the state. I mean, you guys are, are growing quicker than – we couldn't even find property. We were going to build a new facility, and you guys are growing so fast that the property costs were astronomical. So – Compared to like little old Hancock County that's got 8,000 people in it, I mean, they're going to build them a new one just a little larger just for, because this is this money will never come around again. I've been doing this a long time. And you're getting, you're, the, the state's paying for 80% of this project okay. with the county's involvement 20%. And we've never done that in the history of the state. Okay. So, I mean, I just, I just want you to understand those numbers. Yeah, and that, that's that's important. So on, to know. on that last part, I'm sorry, did you go, go, go ahead. On that last part there, how much? That, and David, this is a question for you. I should know something. How much are we into this total right now? Seven something. Seven zero eight. Six sixty one. Six sixty one plus seven zero eight. Seven zero eight. Because but that was already old old ones that we're not using. So you had total three hundred. Yeah. 
The total cost you have on my spreadsheet is 661. That's all your match is. Okay. And, and so what? Uh, got. Okay. Tracking on that. So we're in for 661 thousand dollars. Okay. Then you're going to add. You're going to add two million six hundred forty-five thousand five hundred. And then we have. Well, I'm working on a budget with the uh, a cat accountant for the Department of Health and. We think we might be able to get you another half a million in infl inflationary costs because buildings gone up, and that would be a hundred percent state funded, no money out of your pocket. So basically, so, so my point here is that you, to your, to your best estimate, do you believe that you can do a tear down and build with a six thousand square foot up to code um, and up to the spec with well without? I just, Without I mean, getting any more county money, that's where I'm. That's the question here. Yeah, and that's going to be the big question for a lot of these counties. But you know, we have no idea. Uh, when we first started this project, we went to every region of the state, and commercial schools <coughs> like this were two hundred eighty to two hundred ninety dollars a square foot. So we made an inflationary cost and bumped it up to three thirty five. Well, I just did one in Henderson County, and it was $400 a square foot. So like, if it's 6,000 square feet, you're looking at 2.4 million. And the current budget's around 3.1. But I'm not promising anything. Well, so, Mr. Mr. Mayor, where did you get that comment from earlier that you had? That's your call. Okay. Well, that information is from the So that's what I'm testing right now. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I've heard it's, it's a 75, 25 percent match. Actually, I just want to correct that for the record. At least, Mr. Lawley, uh, is, is that correct? You got 75 percent match. The first, the first part of the money was 75, 25, which is your 660 thousand. But any additional funds, and we're trying to disperse these funds through these 17 counties, and we're roughly adding another 20 to 25 percent that is free, 100 percent state money going to your county for this project because we had some contingency money and if we don't get this put in a contract by the end of june first of july it's going to be hard for us you know the, the federal government's going to take it back in september so and that's why we're on the rush go ahead so i i, I think i've heard it said in meetings that this is 100 percent state math that i hear you saying that's not guaranteed so i'm a little confused so it's, it's real simple. It's, it's like the first portion of the money was seventy-five twenty-five, which was your six sixty. Okay, you stay with me here. Your six sixty-one plus. Let me get it pulled back up here. I apologize. Let's see twelve. All right, the initial the initial contract for Sumner County was six hundred sixty-one thousand four hundred dollars. That is that is county money. Then the additional seventy five percent cost share that is all state money was one million nine hundred and eighty four thousand. Well, we are we have an additional pot of money that we're trying to distribute evenly to the counties to make it fair to everybody. And that money is a hundred percent state funded. Just what's coming on top of these first two numbers. And how much is that? Six hundred thousand it's ballpark 600. Okay, got it. So, okay. So it was a three. It was roughly a three to one match, and this is going to make it about a four to one match once you once you layer that extra one on top of it. It should make it less than that. It should make it about twenty percent. Yeah, that's, that's right. Four I've to got one. Thirty of these in front of me right now. One to five. Yeah, one to five. Sorry. One to five. Yes. Yeah, it's roughly one to five is what it's going to be. And like I said, guys, this this is all just been speaking. But I want to make sure we get that money in a contract for you guys to review. That way you know exactly what we're talking about. And that's why we're trying to rush this thing. You you can take it or leave it. You All can right. you can say I don't wanna I don't wanna build a new one, I want everybody you can do whatever you want with it. I'm just trying to get you a total amount. Got it. Mr. Mansfield. So when I'm talking about the hundred percent is covered above we were told the hundred percent is covered above the six sixty one four hundred. No, 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 no,
you know, if your budget's looking around three one or three two, I just have to do the math. But anything over three one or three two, uh, the county would have to pay because that's all the money we got. This is the problem running this judicial center. Millions of dollars over this. Um, yeah, this is not. I guess that, yeah, this is new information. Yeah, we 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 appreciate your candid. Uh, we have any other any other questions? No, I, I just got one, one more thing, you know, like I said, I understand budget, everybody's having trouble with budget, but once I get an exact number, I'll, I will break it down as to what the county owes, which is going to be the 661, anything over that will be all state funded, and then you can do the math, but I have built two buildings here recently, one came in at 400, the other one was like 4 to 15 a square foot. Okay, 400 to 415 a square foot. Yes. That's what they cost. Who, who is, who's project managing this building? Uh, the project manager for that building, I have, uh, it will be Peter Metz. He is the architect I think you guys have been working with. And I don't think you've got a contract with him yet, but he's done a bunch of these projects across the state. And he does an excellent job. So uh, once, it, once the architect is hired, uh, whoever the county representative wants to be, uh, it'll be myself and the county representative and, and, and the architect you choose. Okay. We, we do on-site, you don't have to pay any extra for on-site observation. Um, any invoice that comes in, I sign off on it and make sure all the proper materials were used and make sure the construction is correct. Mr. Matfield, so you mentioned the $2.645 million state contribution to the $500,000 more than likely uh, uh, additional for inflation. So are you counting that as, is that that $3.1 million total from the state? Is that just hearing you correctly? Well, you, you're, you're real, the, the 3.1 is the total, we we'll count your cost. Uh, my cost is gonna be the $1,984,100 plus the, the possible 600 that's gonna be 100% uh, state match, no match for you guys. And then you got, you'll tack on the 660 on top. Okay, all right, all the thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, we'll talk about that. Any other questions for him? Thank you guys, I don't mean to take up your time. No, no, thank you for, thank you for calling in, appreciate it, sir. All right, y'all have a good one, thank you. Let me clarify the 708. <coughs> Go ahead. 6614 is for this grant. There's a 46,938 that was spent on architectural earlier. I remember that. Do you remember the earlier? So those yeah. together make 708338. And if you look on this, when we get to the ARPA sheet, you can see it all coming out where the differences are. So uh, we'll look, I'm going to pull us back under our rules here without objection. Um, any other discussion? We need to, we need to go, go ahead. We need to. Mr. Hunter, the question is that you know, uh,
with the stipulation that this will be a risk bearing contract, uh, that the contract that issues forth from it must be a risk bearing contract for uh, either the architect or the uh, managing uh, construction manager. I do have a question. If I we need a second. A second. I'll Motion and a second. Okay, go ahead. My question is uh, I posted this on my uh, Facebook page uh, you know, to update people about this, and I did have. Uh, school board member Sarah Andrews was concerned about the location because Merrill Hyde may need the space in the future for the school. I just want to know, you know, where, you know, I don't know if Dr. Lankford wants to speak on that. I don't want to put him on the spot either. Um, are they, uh, you know, I just want to verify they're okay with us using that site. But from our sense, school, it is education department, Department of Education here, it's property, so I just don't want. Don't want to get too far into it and make sure everyone, you know, had their concerns addressed on both sides. With that, um, so I'd motion to suspend the rules if he, if he wants to speak on that. I mean, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. I think that, I mean, if you'd ask me if we'd used one of the other alternative sites, like, I think the best one would have been we could have put it on the old Hawkins School site about 10 years ago. That would have been great. You know, Overwatch Beach would have been good, but neither one of those are on, on the table. So I think like having a good health department, rebuilt, updated, nice, right there by Merrill High, one aesthetically looks better, the parking will be better. I'm sure like we've always been able to use the health department's never had any trouble with after hours us using the parking for so I think we'll be I think we'll be fine. I'll be interested to see the extra two thousand square feet. I, I think there's a lot of dead square footage to Mr. Cross. I think there's a lot of dead square footage in the current space, so it may not have, to have much more of a footprint because that building was built at a time where you like long narrow hallways and a lot of window yeah. space. Mm -hmm. So I think that probably the reason that the two thousand square feet fits in is because there's a lot of wasted space in the current construction. So I mean if you ask like uh, we would way rather have a nine I mean we actually with um, kids a lot of kids coming in from other states and other countries uh, they rely a lot on the health department for immunizations and things like that, and having it centrally located there is a big benefit for partial systems. Any, any other? Oh, Mr. Wright? Scott, I, um, I asked the question about this footprint of this facility because I do know that it's very, very tight there on that campus as far as the usage of it. And I believe you that uh, Commissioner Miller brought this question back up because I was told that it would not be a greater footprint. But I'm hearing now, it sounds like, are you anticipating there will be? Uh, no, sir. I was, I was picking up on Ms. Miller's question, and I was saying there's a lot. I've been in that building before. It's been a while, but there's a lot of dead square footage in there. So my, I think that's a great question. I, I trust you all in your new process. Yeah, it, it's backing up to that playground there at the school and I sure wouldn't want to I, what is that 10 acre uh, only a 10 acre campus there it's very small yeah it's pretty small I wish we bought more land back when we could I, I, that's the only question I have about it I have no concern other than the fact that the, the school originally when it didn't need that all of that property donated that space to be used and it is school property. It is not county property, it's not anyone else's property. I wouldn't want us to sacrifice what the kids could use for the public health department. Any other questions for us, Mike? No, that's, you know, I didn't want to put you on the spot at this meeting, but I, I did feel compelled to ask that because I know like some of the school board members and parents. I mean, did have concerns. If you ask me if there was a better location for the health department that we were ready to move on, but given the time frame, I don't think that's possible. I will always take more land for the schools because we'll always need it. But to me, I think the, the ability to have a centrally located, brand new health department that's not an eyesore from what's currently there, it's much more useful. Is, is a, that's a benefit that's a bit of the school system as well. So that, that's good. We'll be here again. Uh, so while you're up there, we're going to talk about uh, uh, freedom scholarships. And some, I'm just kidding. No, you're good. Um, we'll go back into our rules here. What? Could I? No, go ahead. I, I, I'd just like to make a statement that I that when when we first were sworn in, it was one of the first things we did. 
Commissioner Schmidt, Commissioner Mansfield, Commissioner Brown, and I met at that building. And we determined at the time that if the walls are brick or block construction with framing in between and wood siding, and the roof is definitely tired, but re-roofing a building is not the end of the world, and neither is replacing siding on a building. Um, and I think you guys would all concur. We thought that the building was salvageable at the time. I'm fine if, if this body wants to go ahead and move to demolish it, but I'm just saying that that's, it's, it's going to be a lot more money. I don't know that what Mr. Langford was saying was that it was laid out really badly inside. If, if all those walls can be removed, all the drying drywall torn down and laid out in a much more efficient manner, do you really need 6,000 square feet? I don't know. That's for that's for an architect to get together with yeah. Mr. Hendricks and, and see. So I, you know, it, it's it's just all money. So we have a motion and a second, and the motion I'll restate it is to approve this contingent on uh, the contract that issues forth from it uh, being a risk bearing contract. Uh, any other discussion? My question is going to be um, in regards to Mr. Carlin's concern on the remodeling versus timber and then just going down. Like, regardless, our match is 661 for that's no matter what. <coughs> It's, that's that's what they come what, what that plan is. No matter what it is, we're paying. We're we're 400. in for what we're in. Four hundred, and that's what we're in for. Well, the contingency is if it goes over, we're not. Paying. Yeah, that's right. That they're on up for it. That's how we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, like we're not paying it now. That's we're right. Six sixty one for. Because we approved this in February. Yep. That was the harm of money. Okay. Yeah. Um, just to make sure we're not down over it. Truly, all we're paying is six. That's how we're going to draft up the. That's how we're going to draft up the. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Um, 
in my understanding, let me just state it shortly, and please don't <coughs> uh, overrule me here. But my understanding here was that this, we are getting to a point where because one, we, and it wasn't this body, but the county city jointly uh, has made a change. Uh, and two, because that this is what is holding up a project, we're beginning to get into a risk mitigation type uh, type scenario. So I, I would just be interested in what your recommendation is on this. The the current contractor has a, the ability to uh, perform the work. There's been talks about getting out. I believe uh, other quotes, possibly doing a new uh, bid procedure to have somebody come in and do that. I still think we've got some sort of uh, due diligence with the current contractor just due to this change. And unfortunately, we're cleaning up a mess that was created before my time. So that's that's about the easiest way I can explain it. What the uh, committee or commission chooses to do they could go either route. The question is, how much money are we going to be throwing at it if we bid it out? Mr. Klein. There are several things I just really don't understand about the process that happened here. As I understand it, we had a parking structure that was going to be in a totally different location. <coughs> that parking structure was going to have a storm drain that was going to run to a different area. When we moved that building, there should have been amendments to the costs because the two facilities are not going to cost exactly the same based on their geographic location, the storm drains, all of these things. And so I would have expected at that time that there would have been an amendment to the cost. They would have refigured all the costs of the parking structure, the storm drain, everything that had to happen. But the drawings that were that are in question right now weren't even designed until December of 2023. So it would have been impossible for them to reassess a cost. Now, as I handed out to all of you, I, I took it upon myself to get three different bids. Uh, the bids that, that Turner, their, their contractor bid $399,000. I took the now, they bid that before they ever had a set of drawings. Understand that they did that back last year earlier than the drawings were done and approved. So I took those drawings and I sent them to three different <coughs> contractors. We've got prices of $128,000. We've got a price of $119,596. And we've got a price of or $98,500. All three substantially less than the pipe contractor, the Turner has gotten. So I don't understand how we can be bound to a contract on a parking structure that was in a different location with a different kind of storm drain at the time. And and we don't have any say in the dollar amount at all. Uh, can you answer that? Because I, I have a similar Yeah, I'm not here. saying you are. I'm just telling you why they're at the table. Okay. It's because of the way the contract so was drafted and we were responsible for the significance. Can I ask just, I just well, do you have any other questions? No. I just have a super simple question. If we, is there anything that prohibits us from putting this to a bid? I couldn't find anything, but it, I don't know how down, how far down the road anybody in the county has gone with, with them doing that project now, what's been executed. Mr. Mansfield. I, I don't see the three numbers you're saying. I see two, so I need you to help me understand. I see the 119. Um, I don't. Oh, the 120. I guess that's in my email. Yeah. And then the 98.500. Yeah, and then the 98.5. Yeah. So you're. Um, <coughs> so we're talking about a difference, like four or five x. Well, and plus Turner has an administrative fee of a hundred thousand dollars and a contingency fee of a hundred thousand. The hundred thousand contingency fee, they may not spend a dime of it. Well, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I mean, we have a new fiduciary responsibility to do this for the taxpayers, and we obviously don't return it, not that. I mean, they're rates right. of the coals. Right. It's, you're talking four or five hundred, four hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars difference or more, and for doing the same work. Right. That's crazy. So I, I think 
I would entertain a motion to. Can I go, go ahead? Can I ask a question? I, I don't know if anybody's gone back to Turner and said, now that you've got the plans, can you give us a new number? It, it, it may not be a situation where we need to to switch anybody. I just throw that out as an alternative to because this is going to definitely push the project back. Ms. Miller? In, in general, I'll ask the mayor to take this and the bid to Turner and say, hey, if people can do it, um,
leave it on. The, we can leave it under old business. Here. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Okay. It's not, there's nothing that's necessarily going to come to commission yet. Okay. I thought it's, somebody, it's just the timeline for getting a yay or nay from this. Right. I just thought somebody was trying to speed no. speed track just to this. Uh, Any other discussion on this one? Please? So the motion is yeah. that I mean, if we have the mayor meet. Can we show them the bid? See if Turner wants to. Get us to, to meet and match these, or they want to, to get us to get us some answer back from him within a week, and then we will report back in next month. That'd be correct. In like the May budget, correct. Okay. And go ahead, Bruce Mayor. Mayor. I'd be happy to join you in that meeting if you feel so inclined. All right. I'll amend okay. that to have Commissioner Klein be in the meeting. second. That's fine. All right. So, Mr. Klein and the uh, Mayor will go to this meeting. Uh, that's not going to run us a foul of any. Yep. Me. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 This was for the amendment. All in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we're on the main. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Great. <coughs> okay. Um, so uh, EMS, I'll speak to this one briefly. So this was, uh, what we have noted here is a, a page study, but I don't know that we're going to we necessarily got to this. There was a discussion to have uh, Ms. Boyd. Uh, put together, uh, prepared with the EMS department, um, a uh, yeah, a basically an understanding of what the of what impact there would be specific to either a uh, a lump sum payment or a an amount for uh, like a bonus amount. This was not an actual pay increase. I think that's what we took away from the last meeting. However, Ms. Boyd is not here, and I go ahead, Mr. Long. We have scheduled for the EMS director to meet tomorrow, I believe at 10.30 a.m., if I'm not mistaken. To go okay. into that, if we Ms. Boyd does get back and try to have this secure for next month. So here's, I, I'm going to entertain a motion to discuss. Motion. A second. All in favor? All right. Uh, I don't want to get my own cue here. So here, here's the, I, I've got a thought on this. I don't know whether this makes sense or not. We're getting... We're getting pretty close to the next budget cycle. So I, and I've said this before, I think this body all agrees that having an actual pay change in the middle of the budget cycle is something we wanted to avoid. Um, however, for highway, we were able to give a one-time, we were allocating some funds, 135,000, I believe, for a one-time bonus, uh, recognizing that we've had extreme inflationary effects this year that are well outside of what is typical. Um, and between that and just kind of market pressure keeping folks here. So I, I, because we're so close, if we want to do something that's congruent with what we, I, I would ideally like to do something that's somewhat congruent with what we did with, with the uh, um, highway department. And I, Mr. Long, I, you and I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this, but I feel like, I think that the, Highway Department ended up with something like an eight hundred or maybe a thousand dollar per per person uh, one time. I would uh, like probably about twice that. Was it was it more? So I would like to I would like to consider a you know one thousand fifteen hundred dollar um, one time bonus for uh, ALS and BLS personnel. So it's the ALS and BLS personnel that we think we're looking at. Uh, yes, and that, and that yeah, same, same thing. thing. But you're talking about the ones on the correct. People actually, you know, people out there feeding, feeding, feeding. Um, but one time, and I, is there, do we have an ability to do that? Um, because we had some concerns with uh, backing into overtime. He can do meet the definition of a discretionary bonus and does not go into overtime. It's not a term of a certain plan. Okay. Would, you, would, you, would this be considered a discretionary bonus? The way that it is. Okay, great. Um, do we have a number on, like, if we were, could you back into something like that? Uh, right now on the spot. Yeah, I mean, just. <coughs> they probably know. What, 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 can well, I yeah, have uh, direct on this? Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. How many paramedic agencies do we have actually on the 100 and 103 on the rest of the paramedic agencies? It's going to be about 100. So if you did $1,000 each. So I'm going to make a motion for 150,000. It may or may not fly, but I'm going to make a motion for 150,000 dollars set aside for one-time bonus.
Chris, for the uh, uh, EMT personnel, uh, ALS and DLS. That's my motion. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion on this one? Go ahead. This is not precluding any remedies at budget time. No, it is not. It is totally separate. Okay. Totally separate. Because I, as, I, as I look at this schedule, we should be ashamed that we're paying 65000 and Robertson County is paying seventy three. But I just want to make sure no, 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 that this, we're going that, to that's, take this. Mr. Hi, yeah, uh, just to be clear here, this this is a, a, a bridge between points. I think okay. we all recognize between EMS and the Highway Department. The Highway Department, the, the bonus okay. that was given, uh, it was not for okay. change. Sure. They are separate pockets. Okay. Mr. Mansfield. So that, how many understand those? Revenue for the, 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 the highway department money was coming from income actually generated in the sales tax, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, gas, gas, gas tax. tax. Yeah. Gas tax. Gas tax. So this would come from the general fund. Yes. Okay, just general we would be We would be spending, we're not getting any extra. They're, they're uh, to my knowledge, we haven't generated any extra. Right now, it looks like they might be about 135000 in budget to work the mercy of Medicare, Medicare payment time. Just a different beast. But I'll, I'll just you know, clarify. You know, Chairman Knight and Robinson County did raise property taxes or that rate as soon as the state on the record. And it is you know, just an awful disclosure that we had the same discussion with the chair of the department discussion back in October. So I just wanted to get that out there. So we want to think about one time bonus. So if we have a large turnover, people may wait to get the one time bonus completed. If you increase them in the last five years, that's a thought process if you're going to spend 150000 and you're going to do CPI ladies, you need, you know, some CPI ladies, make sure that you can edit or whatever, just to keep it from all being in one month, you take the same 150 over an hourly rate and spread it over the rest of the year. I have the same I, thing. I, I, I get it. I, I, I don't still. This for me, the reason I did it this way is that I, and I understand it. Look, somebody, about one time. I understand. Like I understand, somebody can say, "Look, well, I'm going to, I'm going to wait. I'm going to collect it, and I'm going to still, I'm going to go anyway." I get it, but I also like one. I'm just trying to stay consistent with what we've done with the other departments, and two, um, you know, I realize this year is a little bit different, but trying to stay disciplined about not doing true raises outside of the cycle, like we, we. We broke that rule. We're breaking this a little bit. I'm trying to get us back into that. That's why, and we're so close. I mean, we're, we are we are extremely close to the next budget cycle anyway. So we're just talking about two months. So I I'm going to keep my motion away. Mr. Chairman, if we break this down to, to hourly or to a salary for this this year, I'm afraid the significance of, of that will not be felt by the workers, and then look at it later. Right, and that's the that's the idea, Mr. Wright. We're we're the idea, and we stated this before, is that this and what we've done with highway is a little bit of a bridge, recognizing that this has been a that this year has been somewhat exceptional. Uh, this year, we going forward, the forward guidance was five percent cola plus. That's baseline. That's what we're going to plan for, and then there will be not for every department, but within different subsections of each department. There will be some market-based adjustments, right? Just acknowledging what you're looking at right there, that certain uh, certain classes of personnel are significantly behind market, and it shows because we had folks leave. So, any other discussion on this um, one? Go ahead. You know, what, uh, you know, bonuses too? That works in the private sector getting Christmas bonuses, and sometimes the tax kills you. But you brought up a good point, um, and I may not be well received by some of the employees that work for that, but if we spread it out, in, and I understand you don't want to do this mid-cycle, but if we did go the route David Mullen maybe was suggesting to just add it onto their hourly rate versus a one-time bonus, um, I think that does two things. Uh, does one thing, it saves them on the tax. Two, um, I've discussed, maybe I've discussed this with you, I ran into someone um, Saturday night uh, from another agency at the Sebastian Rogers vigil. She, I think she was working for Metro now, and she made the comment that, you know, I asked her, I said, you know, you know I don't even know if she worked here. I think she worked for some of the county, but she said, you know, the reason why they go to Metro is because of the, the money. And Metro will literally cherry pick our people to go work there because they know the training's good, et cetera. So 
I'm just when you brought up about the hourly rate, I wonder if that would just maybe bridge them. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna be against it, but if you want to make a motion, uh, I think I would. Yeah, I mean, the tax. I mean, what's your motion? To maybe explore doing the hourly rate. It. Do we have a second? I mean, I can't. I know this is kind of unusual. Yeah. Here, I get it, but I, I, I do, I do see. I don't want to lose good people either, and I, I like to your point too. If they get the bonus and then they just skip town after two or three weeks. I mean, and I get it. There's print. no perfect solution. No, I know. I get it. it it's the perfect solution was not to print infinite dollars by the Fed, but they chose right. to do that. Um, any other discussion? Go yeah. oh, go ahead. And Look, we don't. Have, we have a motion. Is anybody going to second Mr. Smith's motion? Plus, 
fifteen hundred dollar bonus. Uh, that's that's my amended motion. Anybody have a second on it? Mr. Schmidt, anybody? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. I don't think anyone's going to favor mine. Uh, it's, uh, I just and this is just to get to the next budgets or main. That's it's right. We are we are to literally main. just trying. This, to, is, this is a bridge. It's a bridge. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a one time deal. And if we people want to make a better, put together a better uh, schedule than that between now and, and Monday, I'm happy to. I think we certainly could. Yeah. Well, we don't have the data to know who's worked 5, 10, 15, 15 or 20 years. So we can come up with the amount before Monday. There we go. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Go ahead. I mean, I, I just I mean, I got to point this out because it bothered me. I mean, we were, you know, during the appointment process. Uh, Chief Paul also really told people when to quit, and some you, you, I don't know what I mean, that was attrition. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor, you said that there, there was a cancer, or I'm not quoting exactly, being eradicated or a cancer cell or contingent within the EMS. So, I mean, I don't know if people have, have quit as part of lack of morale and leadership. I just don't know. So, I mean, just like I've got to put it out there because these are things that I heard said from the floor, heard said from uh, public comments, citizens, and from EMS employees. So, I, I don't. Can't just blame everything on the market. I mean, and that's what I've heard so far. And I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, point that out because I think it's fair to say that. So um, I just think we need to realize this, this might not be attrition just because of um, jobs. It might be attrition because of leadership too. So I, mean, I think that's a fair thing that we've heard. So just to understand. Mr. Clark, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know who you could direct the question to, but a lot of times when people leave companies. They have an outgoing uh, interview. Do we do that in EMS? I know that's not a question you probably can answer, but I mean, the county mayor may know. Do, do we do exit interviews? Typically, an HR function. We don't have an HR department. Do we do, do it with any EMS though? No, no, informally. But you know, we'll talk to people. Yeah, I know. I've talked to a lot of people that were happy. I think, yeah, they're not looking at the benefits. Like you get a 20-year-old or 3rd year old person, they're not looking at the health insurance benefits, they're looking at the check, which what's more the size of the check. Your versus. benefits don't pay for groceries, though. Right. Oh. So I, I think it's something we're going to have to look at um, really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the general consensus of the eggs and people is the money. Yeah. Any other? Is a significant factor when we start with Any other discussion on this one? Do we need to restate the? I think I, I laid this one out. Restate the motion. Yeah, so the motion is uh, to appropriate uh, funds, because now I've, I've kind of changed it because I'm, I'm doing this by schedule, funds such that such to allow for a one-time discretionary bonus uh, for uh, medical field personnel with those with Z. The schedule is as follows. Zero years to five years, $750 bonus. Five years and a day to 10 years. Uh, $1,000 bonus, 10 years in a day to 15, 1250 15 years in a day, $1,500 bonus. That's my motion. Go ahead. So it's not a hundred fifty thousand dollars No, it's, it's, this all gets summed up. We don't even have an amount. We don't even know how much. Oh, well, it's going to be, it's going to be less because without, uh, not all, that 150, <laughs> that 150000 was 150 roughly times 103. So it was, you know. That was that got us there. Not all 103. Most of the 103 of these are going to fall under the, the lower end of this, so it's going to end up being less than what we originally asked for. That's why. Just that's why I built that. I'm schedule not against that one. the one down there. I just don't. I don't feel like we have that one. Well, we. I mean, we don't. But that is definitely imperfect. But any other questions on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries unanimously. Oh, uh, wait a second reading. Do I need to wait a second? Yeah, so I'm going to change that to wait a second reading uh, pending uh, unanimous decision. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. All right. Um, so there's the EMS. Uh, ARPA. So last month I put forward a uh, document, and it is uh, page 35 to 37. Uh, I just want to make a note here that there are going to be two things that are relevant to this discussion. One is here, and another one is down in uh, 6D3, $300,000 for the city of Millersville. 
Um, so this was a request for um, one point. I believe it was one point seven million. What's that? Oh, we got one point. Sorry, one point eight nine. Um, what's that? I thought you said half of that. No, it was it was more. It was it was not the one point eight nine. Or oh, you know what? You're correct. So it would be nine hundred nine hundred fifty thousand. That's what I was thinking about. So so nine hundred fifty. Sorry. Uh, for the uh, Hendersonville to assist with Hendersonville with the construction and upgrade of a sewer system. Uh, phase two for uh, Hendersonville. This, just want to note that this is for the Hendersonville Utility District. Uh, this is will not uh, impact or assist any residential development. Um, got we deferred this last month. I would entertain a motion. I'll go ahead and make the motion on this one since I brought it. So I move to approve this. I'll second it. I can tell you, I, I spoke with Mayor Clary this afternoon. I called him and. I asked him what he thought, and I told him I wasn't going to put him on the spot. But I asked him, do you think this would help future development of businesses? Would it help businesses existing there improve? And he thought it would. Um, so I, I mean, I agree. Like I said, I'm not holding him to any, I told him that I'm not holding your yeah. feet to the fire there. I said, but this is not helping the city directly. This is helping a utility help its customers. So, any other uh, any other discussion on these? Any questions? Sure. I'll go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that I uh, I have no problem at all with uh, I haven't with water lines or anything else. Even though I'm within the city of Hendersonville and all of those services, I think that if we can assist some of our smaller cities and utility districts.
3.5 is actually to do the sewer lines on the south side and the north side of West Main, uh, from Three Hill to Mallard, uh, and also behind the old 699 building, all the way up, uh, almost to New Shack. Uh, so that is the new sewer line uh, going in for those businesses. So I have a question for you, all guys here. Um, so. Last month, we decided to appropriate, I think, a large portion of it. Did we end up appropriating all of our additional? You did the revenue replacement. This one may fall under the ARPA property. We need to be evaluated. I think it probably will be. How much do we have left on that one? Uh, 2.8. 2.8? Okay. So, so you're no, asking for I two. I was only requesting for half of what so the change order was. So you're, so you're asking two. 1.7. That's, that's the number I had in my head. But where's, where's the 1.7 coming from, though? Because you got a change order. It was half of the change order, which was uh, what this change order is 3.5. So it's half of the 3.5. Okay, so 1.75. Right. I don't have that. Yeah, we need to get that. You have a. Uh, got it. Uh, it was in that. We just had this. Uh, we can get. Yeah, I had the PowerPoint last time. I yeah, didn't we didn't. Know the meeting was tonight, so I didn't get a extra copy. Yeah. So what you're asking for is the is is 1.75, which is half of change order to, which is half of the change order for phase two. I can't guarantee that uh, the same bid will come out, but we're willing to cover everything above that. All right. Um, if we have we did two, have to change do the change order. So we have contractor that did the total job. Uh, he can't guarantee so we have, that were two months ago. So we have 2.8 left. This is this will have roughly a million left afterwards. And they were asking, and I know there's a $300,000 ask coming in a minute. All right. Uh, any other questions? Just to kind of understand um, this, since it wasn't stated from the beginning from the public, so they're asking for assistance with the project that they're doing in the city to upgrade. So currently, the county has a problem with people in the county where they want to get annexed. The zoning ordinances get changed as long as there's a hookup to the utility district, and they can change it to half acre lots instead of one acre lots as long as there's utilities available from the <laughs> department. So whoever the entity is, whether it be White House or Laura Henderson, I don't understand this right. We're not interested in using this as a point of um, um, what, what, what they can do for us, what we can do for them. What, what are you asking? Well, I, I mean, we're asking them for assistance to upgrade infrastructure in the city. Wait, I mean, what do we want them to do? To hold off on some of the allowances for annexation uh, changes that are being made when something is zoned one acre because they're allowed to go to half acre lots if this is available to them to slow some of that down. I don't know what the exact task would be, but it seems like now's the prime time to do it. If we're going to, would you, I mean, would the ask be to not, I'm not necessarily against it, I'm just like trying to boil this down to a discrete thing, and not yeah, just yeah. like an idea. Of like, no, I'm just throwing out So, out. yeah, no, we're, we're going to, so let's think. <laughs> so do, are you asking them to like not tap into any residential? Like we're not, this isn't a, this isn't a water, this is a, this is sewage. Are you asking, like, what are you, what are you, what's the specific thing you're, you're asking here for going to kill not to do, or to do? I'm always asking you to help us help you. I mean, I'm not opposed to doing this, but this is a prime time to negotiate some of these issues that we're having in the county, in the city creek that's happening in the county. They're the ones approving it. So we're helping with infrastructure. And now would be the time to ask them to help us with not approving those half acre lots being built in rural residential. They're totally separate. No, the city. No, they have to sign off on it. The utility district is the one that approves the hookups. If that's available to them, then they can change the well to the half acre instead of one acre. Go ahead. We don't have any class meetings there. We're not doing anything besides the. I know you're not changing it. You have to say yes, you're allowed, right? Or is it just you would say.
say yes, we have the capacity. We, we supply to that site. Yeah, you, you either have the capacity or you don't. And if you do, you will. No, we, have to, we have to supply if it's, if it's a new lot. Unless we don't have there's some sort of capacity if we're mandated by the state to have a moratorium and not, then we have to put we don't have any we don't have any ability. It's a little bit different than that. Yeah, I know that's the answer. It's a lot of it's different. Who who is paying who is paying the bill for the city? Is it the city of Hendersonville? You are, but people are. And, and are you? You're a private entity. It's a state governed uh, <laughs> district. It's a municipality. It's outside of the utility district under TCA rules. And it's similar to White House utility. White House utility set up the same way. Considering spring stuff, big water is not. Uh, I think they're part of the city. Same way. Uh, yeah. Hey, you so go ahead. City manager, though, appoint people to your new board. Yeah, what is uh, no, uh, our board is a, a county county executive. Okay. So, so and that's the same way with every. How, who who governs that board? Uh, the state of Tennessee. Uh, it's a three member board. So who and who appoints them? Uh, we submit names to the county executive on uh, when they're reappointed. So you all submit and. Is that, is that by state? Is that by state law, or is that so you can't? Yeah, there's, that's there's, not by private act. There's, I was uh, trying to see if we could charge. Yeah. This is this is what. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. This is what I was talking about, and I'm not throwing stones at you necessarily, but by charter, uh, some of the utility districts like um, Cascade Springs, Ben Page, Cascade Springs, they elect by popular vote in their community. The trustees that operate those utility districts. Those of us who live in the city of Hendersonville uh, do not have any direct uh, control of the utility district. They can tax, and when I say tax, they can tax by increasing rates. Uh, whoever the three, I think you have five, you know, three, three, three people. <coughs> Can charge you whatever they really want to do. I, they, you know, and I'm not saying they are unreasonable. I'm saying that's the authority they have. They tax without being voted on by anyone. And I think utility districts need to have um, a popular election by the community. And we're really off subject here, but we, there, there is not the kind of control over utility districts. I think that there should be. Um, I think that citizens ought to have a direct vote rather than the three people on the board deciding who they want to come on if there's a vacancy on the board and then recommend it to the county executive. We have no authority. Because even though they tax in an indirect way, they can just tax perpetuate without it. representation. So, I don't, but the way I'm understanding it, this is a state. I, well, we don't. I don't know that we have any ability that we can. We have. This, this is uh, what's yeah. being said here is me. Uh, the thing is, is, you know, I think it's in my, people in my district. The two water, do we, the two water Do we have any other questions? For did you just go ahead? Is Stoke uh, this work still from Ballard Drive to Orchard <coughs> Creek on Galveston Road? Uh, that's on the. North side, south. Of, north that's on south the north side. side. It actually goes a little bit past Orchard Creek, past the 699 building, uh, up to uh, behind old Adcock's garage on the south side, and past yeah, Mount So this is only for Gallatin Road. Yeah. And it's just yes. sewer on the customer. There is a private system that's uh, run by Fox that's owned over there. They've got their own, they paid for a grinder pump a long time ago. It's basically a private grinder. There are two or three customers there that are on it. So I, I wasn't quite following what Commissioner Jones was talking about. That residential annexes. Residential exceptions to sewer. Uh, it, was that applicable? No, it, 
was. Additional training uh, material supplement. Uh, do we actually need to 
appropriate this? Oh, this would be the supplement received. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I got it. I got it. All right. Uh, entertain a motion. 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 We have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. What's that? Uh, yeah, so we did motion to raise the second reading. Is the second good with that? All right, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, so this is, okay. So item two, this financial management committee, this is for option two for approval of approximately $270,000 for the correction of the employee paper. Mr. Long, you can you speak, you go ahead. A long-standing practice, which should have never been started way before my time, there's a group of about 200, and I believe I have a number on the email. Two hundred twenty-eight employees are paid. For instance, they get paid this this Thursday. This Thursday, they are actually getting paid through Friday. So basically, their whole last week of their payroll is an estimate, which makes automation and payroll issues, pay that shouldn't be paid, it creates all kind of um, confusion and administrative work. Talking to um, the city of Murfreesboro, for instance, what they did in the past several years back was the same thing. What the financial management committee voted was. Uh, contingent upon the county commission and the budget committee approving it for the last payroll in June. In other words, say we're getting paid this Friday to give those employees those five days of the dummy day and move the payroll back here. That doesn't mean they're going to get an extra paycheck or anything. What that means means is when they quit or retire or whatever, that they'll have five more days accrued sometime over time. But what that will fix is all the confusion of where, for instance, uh, Right now, we're trying to move the libraries on chronos, and even off of chronos, they've had some different issues keeping up with their time, and it's making even issues on it because we have to estimate that last week, so it's very confusing. So this is going to help you guys out. It would help clear that up. Uh, one request that I did receive by email, so did Mr. Show. If you do approve it tonight, uh, Ms. Boyd's requested that you do not waive, waive the second reading because it wouldn't happen to June anyway because she wanted to be here to discuss it. She sent me and Mr. Show. Yeah, I recall that. And, uh, I recall the email and uh, well, I entertain a motion for discussion. Motion. Second. Motion for discussion. Is it for discussion or for approval? Discussion. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I want to get in the queue on this one. Um, so I, I, I'm fine with this, but how how do we prevent this going forward? Is this is this a, a matter of people being on Cronus? What is the people will have a hold back when they start? Yeah. In other words, when you start, they should hold your week back. Just like you would at any, any employer. Is that, is that, do we, well, let me ask it this way. Is that being done? Not right now because then these groups are going to have two groups of employees. You're going to have groups with hold back and no hold back, which creates so some the, of the departments even more confusion. The real question, and I think this is probably going to be Ms. Boyd's question, how do you enforce, how do we make this? Well, when we start, when we have them on crowd notice. It will pay them based on actual time. Uploaded. So we have to put people on the chrono. It would actually be, well, you'll have the actual time down there in the time sheet. For instance, the sheriff, a highway, and EMS already have on back. What, what, what enforcement mechanism, what ability do we have to make sure people are on this system? The private act. Yeah. You're right. But I mean, that's great. But I mean, it's a piece of paper. What can we actually do? Because that piece of paper has been there for a long time and it's still not being done. So, like, what can we actually physically do to make people get on this thing? Do we, like, like put, we like, spears out or something? We had a meeting that was set up for some reason that got canceled uh, the 15th of this month. And we will have all the department heads in here to talk about what was the whole of us. Some of the members will get there this and I mean, look, if, if it doesn't, I'm not even saying there's anything magical about Cronus. It's like we're, if, if the department heads all went as, I've heard other depart some departments heads say that they've got their issues with it. I, I mean, I just, I want to prevent this from happening. Maybe so what's, what's, the, what's the remedy here? Pay from actual time, not an estimate. So Cronus or actual time sheets that are sent down certified with a week on back. What you have to do when the boy comes in, you know, they'll pay back the um, The sheriff's department did several years back. Mr. Mansfield? Well, I guess my first question is does this solve the problem presently or no? 
Yes, if, if all the new employees have to have a whole bag of salt, the problem. If they, well, if they. Well, they will because we just don't pay them for where they're not going to How will we know? How will we know? That's why I said we're going to have the time. Well, that's <laughs> that's right. Right. Without the chronos or the time sheets, we can't. We can, without the, right that's now, the, that's Sarah right. do not provide us time sheets. And they say they're not required until we're on the So, chronos. I mean, I'm not saying we necessarily. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Manson. Um, well, you, you said option two, but I, uh, well, the finance director uh, suggested option five. I mean, did you say option two? Or did that mean I said option two because that's what's written here. Well, option two is what the committee and the elected officials and everybody recommended. Option five was, was um, they, they voted against it. So I, that was just my number one. Um, is option two the fastest one to get us where we need to be? Is that one? Yes, yeah, so option two and five will get you there. Well, but again, that that's not going to, I want to be super clear here. This is going to get people, we're going to be square up till now. But until people are either A, turning in a paper time sheet, or some spreadsheet with timesheets on it, or B, are on a, the chrono system, then we 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 don't actually have a mechanism in place to prevent this from happening again. When I came here, what we received was a sheet that was created by the former, I guess, finance director that basically had the amounts that people got paid and any adjustment to that pay, and that's all we received. Since then, we've been uh, we've got several departments on the chrono system and several of the time sheets. But the same thing, it's been uphill, uh, uphill because one of the big issues is the lack of full planning. It's hard for them to send a time sheet if they're paying you Friday for paying Thursday for Friday for work for Friday. No question. Let's go ahead. It's your Monday. Is anything going to break if we defer this time? No. Okay. Do we have a motion to do it in January? We have a motion and a second to defer. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right. Deferred. Okay. Um, so now moving on to uh, $396,000 for the Bearcat. Uh, entertain a motion. Motion. To, motion to, to approve. Motion to approve. Without second reading. To a motion to approve without second reading. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Okay. Anybody want to get in line on this one? Get in queue. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. There we go. Uh, uh, the Opioid Abatement Committee report. Oh, so uh, we have, Mr. Ron, if you want to go ahead and start with this one. Sam, the uh, employee that was last year to present that, he's got a sick grandparent, so he's not here tonight. And um, very sick. But this is what the Opioid Abatement Committee is requesting from the County Commission, much like the um, charitable giving organization they created an application and a process. And they wanted County Commission for more or less to approve it to make it official. But the one thing they are asking for, if you look on page 124 for the 2025 budget cycle, they're asking to appropriate. Um, 901,622.77, which is the amount available right now, with 401,622.77 to be used immediately and the 500,000 to be used. What, what is this going to be go, going to go for? They're wanting to do, um, actually, just similar to the um, charitable giving um, panel where they actually um, evaluate what it's in the county. So do we already have, do we already, so do we already have a, like a set of, I'm assuming they're clinics or some sort of case management. Like, what's the? Do we have an outline of what this is going to go toward here? What they're what they're wanting to do is basically, if you look and they have June 20th. My understanding, and I talked to them today, <coughs> is they want to get the appropriation in, and then they're going to do the evaluation and send it to county commission for their approval or disapproval. So you in the June June commission meeting because if they're not profit. The county commission has to appropriate them individually anyway. Okay, so that what they're asking for is they're they're asking for they're asking for the the nine hundred and one or for the four hundred and one. I understand they're wanting to use the four hundred and one immediately and the nine hundred and one they want the whole nine hundred and one appropriated. So that so I don't understand the difference though. Well basically they're wanting to do the four hundred and one immediately and they're wanting to hold back the five hundred thousand. Okay, so they're gonna take four so so they're gonna take four hundred thousand dollars. And in a, a month, 
we're going to get a back a set of recommendations for dispersal up to four hundred thousand dollars for various activities. Right. Is that correct? Right. If you look at the one of the proposals, I also meet on page one twenty-seven. Yeah, no, I see uh, this. That, I was just confused by this because I saw like I, I was good with it, but it looked like this was kind of a um, just like a an application type and review procedure. Yeah, that's what they were. And then, it, but then they were asking for funds, and I didn't understand why. That, well, what happens with the charitable giving? You go ahead and appropriate the funds, and then the charitable giving will send you back a resolution. It'll go through budget all the way back through the process with the individual. All right, I got it. Recommending. Because by statute, I got the county it. commission has to approve the individual. I got it. Okay. So they want to do a similar process, but the chair will give him that. I got it. The commission approved the process. Okay. So the bottom line, they don't have any specific line items to review yet. No, they're just asking you to approve They're the asking for a bucket. So the commission, well, they're also asking the commission to approve the process and application. Got it. Okay. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, yeah, the I get it. Any, any other questions on this? So, uh, I'm a part of this committee as well, I just want to point out that this is money that's already been received from I the understand. opioid yeah, no, I understand. items. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, you're yeah, totally understand. It's not, but I just want the team up to be ready I got to it. use it once they get so, everything I approved. Let me be clear, they're asking for the 901 in the 2025 budget, not for a, a resolution Monday. Got but it. But they are going to send the rest of the packet forward the way they can approve. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make a motion to <laughs> approve the procedure it's going to have three parts. One, approve the procedure. Two, uh, appropriate uh, the total of the 901,000 uh, for set aside, and then for the of that, the 401,000 for immediate consideration of distribution in the 2025 budget. Uh, in the budget. Motion and a second. Any further discussion, Mr. Squad? So, I, I I had a meeting with Dustin, and this is, he's also talking about infrastructure. We we looked at. It. Building or two, so he's needing a home for that's part of beyond the this. Is that beyond the 400? Well, one? It, it, this has to get rolled first. Okay, so I wasn't sure because I know he was taught, he, he did have to show me a budget, but it, it, I didn't know, I don't remember if we could apply for this or not. And you're saying, no, it doesn't, not yet. Okay. He, he's just spending a bunch of play right now. He's just asking for the 400. He wants to be teed up so he so can move whichever yeah, direction. Like Any other discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Brown Park uh, at Liberty Creek. So, uh, I don't, is there anything that we actually need to do? No, I just included this for one reason. When there was a discussion Monday about the Brown Park and the 500000 there was a discussion that there's no funds being expended. That's not entirely true. There's That's a couple of things. Originally, the county appropriated $100,000 for I guess the park study, which we spent $91,346. There is in the budget right now $500,000 from the trust, one twenty-five county match, and $625,000 grant. There is a, out of the um, grant match, and the other half has to come from uh, the county and from the grant, there's a $128,000 veto. $54,113.73 has been spent local. Fifty-four one hundred thirteen seventy-three has been spent by of grant funds contingent upon us receiving, leaving ninety-eight. You know, about eighteen thousand dollars left on the PO. That being said, if we completely stop the process, then the county is going to need to cover the amount that we're going to claim back to those grants. That, there was a discussion Monday stopping the process by the lower I wanted to make sure everybody did understand that so this we, is the process has been moving forward. Yes. Yeah, so of the. I guess there was the hundred and twenty five thousand I was not tracking. Through. Okay, there's 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 several budgets. There was a hundred thousand several years ago to do a park study. We spent all the that. Then there's a hundred and twenty five thousand low one cap low back at the one that like the county put point. back for this grant a couple years back. It was in the budget. There's five hundred thousand dollars from the trust and a six hundred twenty five thousand dollar grant because there were fifty fifty matches. So so why did we do a so we did so we're not doing a five hundred thousand dollar match, we're doing a six hundred and twenty five thousand dollar match. Yes, sir. Uh, five hundred thousand dollars in trust and we've already got another hundred and twenty five thousand. And we've led a hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars. So we said that's a hundred and twenty five is already out there. Yes. Well we've had an increase of cost from COVID. Yes. The grant was allowed to go up by about hundred and twenty five if we would match another hundred and twenty five, so we did. But what I'm saying you've got a hundred and twenty 
$28,000 a year right now that we spend most of, with 64000 coming from okay. grant funds, 64000 local. So, Is that if we do not, um, yes. But my, with that being said, if you completely cancel the project, then the 125 is not going to cover the plate. I have to come up with about three more thousand. <coughs> How much are we going to have to come up with? About three more thousand. So, so, we're, so we'll lose 125 and then the 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, was to just take the 500000 so that we could okay. use that for what uh, for what the will intended. So, I, so okay. this, this video is back from all of 2026. Go ahead, Mr. Klein. I'm trying to figure out who's riding this horse because it's not general operations. I, I, don't, I don't know who's directing. I don't know who's this thing just kind of has a life of its own from everything I can tell. It's not run through any county committee. It's had a PO since August 30, 2022. Okay, so that was prior to Back us. before we got right. it. Okay. So it's been running off this PO since then, so it may have went to Gen Off before your group. I'm not really sure. Gen Off no, wasn't no. always involved in things like this necessarily. Okay. That may be a request to send it to Gen Off if that's what you request. To be honest, I'm not sure of oh, anything's happened that was already set in motion before. It seems like if we're spending the money, we, we ought to know something about it. Is there a is there a question yeah. motion? Oh, go ahead. What is the interest of? I, I think this money's been around since 2016, mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, trust money, the, the 500,000. So I mean, do we know the interest captured on that? Do we? We don't know what that is, though. You'd have to back into it. You'd have to get it. Uh, you'd have to take the. You'd have to just kind of carve that out and say, okay, we've had this much interest on the total amount. The, the mayor has here. that documentation. Uh, Mr. Ranchill, do you have another one? Uh, it's just what is the. I guess the request is to approve approve the invoice for payment. No, it, it's already got. A, there's no. Yeah, there's no. There's nothing to be done. This is just information for you because Monday there was a discussion that no money. Was out on the project to make sure everybody does understand the project. There's $128,000 out. That's out on the project now. That this project's been moving since August of 2022, <coughs> past the the preliminary expenditure of 91000 So there was a park study, and I believe a lot of people were under the perception that the park study's office been done. There's a lot of engineering been done too. Because of the $128,000 PO, about $108,000 has already been dispersed. So it was a total around 1.2 something million dollars. The whole project? Yeah, right. I mean, that's what 1.3 has been appropriated. 1.25 million, 1 million 250,000 was for the grant and the matches, and then there was 100,000 for the plan earlier before previous to that that was appropriated, of which 91,346,000 was spent. So it's a total of 1.35. Yeah. Counting study. So there's. There's nothing to be done on this. Any further discussion on this? Is this for information? Make sure everybody understands where we're at. How do we keep getting so much misinformation with general operations? Like, I mean, we don't know. I just heard the discussion Monday at the commission well, meeting. Just and just it. And there's been two things tonight that we were. Which, which other one? The health department. Oh. Any other discussion on this one? I mean, I don't know what. Uh, I, I, I think we should ask our, our legal team here, what are we responsible for? I mean, this this park, the designs I've seen are going to be way more than 1.25 million. And we haven't even talked about renovating the house, which is the jewel of the park. So the house will be part of the park's population. That's, that was, that, that was going to be my point. If you, if you want to talk about this park, there's really two parks. In play, there's the park referenced in the codicil, and then there's the park that's already been platted and planned out, which I do not believe incorporates.
incorporates the house at all. So what we've got is whatever the school board's doing is, is their thing. What we should be involved in from a county level is the house, maintaining the house, and creating some sort of separate park that makes it the center stone pursuant to the will. I think the will said that you could make the park and maintain it. So that's my question. It doesn't say how much that 500,000 had to be due to create a park. <coughs> so we know the 500 is specifically for the county to preserve the house. So no, it, it's it's you can create a park. My point is this: you can have two independent parks and call it the same thing. So I, 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 that's what we got going on. I think here. what. So here's the thing. I, this is a good discussion, and I actually think maybe this should have been some of this discussion should have been for legislators. But I don't for this particular item. I don't know that there's anything to be done unless somebody. It was for information only because I when I heard that. Monday night, I was not sure Got that everybody was on the same right. page, so I have to put this on the system. Mr. Clark. I, I'm just wondering if we need to put the brakes on something until we figure out who owns what. Well, what, right. here's we, how the, all the property is. It's county and school board. Including the house? Including the house. Okay. And that's part but of the, the problem. The care and maintenance of the house is specifically left to the county to take care of. <coughs> through the MOU? No, no, it's through the no, it's through the codicil. Yeah. Through the codicil. Yes. Okay. And it's got to be the centerpiece. I mean, it's laid out. I, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I've read it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the county's involvement lies, and only the county. Whatever the school board's doing with their park outlay is independent. Uh, now, the co mingling of county money and, and how the school we, board's doing that's just, separate we just, issue. We just, we have just, to handle that during the last during legislative to request that five hundred thousand plus interest back. Now, hopefully it passes this time. Let me just be clear, there's no action. I just put this on here because Got it, it sounded like Monday that everybody was not on the same page. So I have to put it on the agenda to make sure everybody's aware of where we are on just clarifying I was said that there was no money that had been expended to get there at that Well that's what I was hearing Monday that there was a understanding of that. They didn't necessarily specifically say that but that's why I put that yes. on the agenda. Now we clarify there hasn't been money yes there hasn't been of local money, of the 125, we spent at least 60, whatever half that we had. And then you spent another 97 and dollars on the study the, of the, for the study to begin with. All right, we're going to keep spending money. Any, any other, any other questions on this one? Okay, uh, moving on to the because there's no action, just have to be done on that one. Uh, so three hundred thousand dollar offer funds request for Senator Millersville, uh, Mr. Mansfield. This was yours. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Mansfield. Go ahead. Yes, um, this obviously when last month the uh, request was added to the agenda for and this last month, so we obviously saw an opportunity for uh, Millersville um, and looking out for my district. Um, you know, we, we've helped Northern of the county give them $10 million for um, water lines, infrastructure improvements, West Norland, Portland. And so uh, there's definitely been a need in Millersville for a while um, where their um, sewer system is, has been inadequate. And basically, there's been a plate out there uh, from Metro uh, asking them to kind of get compliant. I do have the, the interim city manager and the public works director here. Motion to approve. So, well, I, I was going to ask for uh, um, an amended to ask for $500,000 total. And the reason why um, is they have an opportunity for and I didn't realize this when I made the ask, but uh, TDEC would, would give them a, a grant of $955,000 for a project that really is going to cost $1.476. Millville doesn't have even the matching funds for that. $300,000 is for the GIS study to map their whole system and keep it compliant so they're not in the kitchen with any of the waterways. Um, but they really need them. I think it's 521 total is what they need. So, so motion, motion for 521? Five, motion for 521. Okay. Motion is second. All right, from uh, Mr. Hyde. Um, I would, Commissioner Mansfield, I was, I came here prepared tonight to, uh, I, I have no vote on this. I want everybody to know I'm an ex officio member of this committee, but I do have a vote on the floor. I, I'm hesitant now because I am a commissioner in Hendersonville and I was totally supportive of this, but I don't know now. I, it, it grieves me that we're not helping Hendersonville because they will go ahead with their project one way or the other, and who's going to pay for it? They're going, they're going to pass it on to every commissioner and every resident in Hendersonville to 
could get what they want. Well, I think that I would like to see us help in as many way, ways as we can with health and safety. But we were op opening this door to, to sewer problems, and we had two here tonight. And then it makes it difficult for me to support one and not the other one. And I, I'm very, Mr. Hutt, I, I am somewhat hesitant to say that in that, uh, you know, my mother's family all came from uh, Millersville. Uh, the Lassiter family had lived there for many, many years and were big time farmers. Uh, I, I love the area as the school superintendent when the Board of Education voted to close the four small schools in the county. I was at the same time making a proposal and was successful to build a Millersville Elementary School and give the city of Millersville uh, the old school, which I don't know what it's being used for now. All of that to say, it, it's just, I don't know if I want to open this door now if we're just going to not help everybody. Mr. Hyde, I agree with you, and so I'm going to make, I'm going to amend my motion. To state that we'll do the 500, uh, my motion is now to approve $521,000 for the city of Millersville and another $1.75 million for uh, the city of Hendersonville. So yeah. we do both of those. Motion in a second. Subject to Arbor General. Subject, subject to Arbor General. Mr. Mansfield? Yeah, I mean, I, I've stayed on that vote earlier just because I, I didn't know it was for $1.75 million. So that's just a lot of I just had to, wanted to think about that a little bit more, but um, I mean, that, to me, we're comparing the apples to oranges a little bit. We're the two cities, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't, I don't have any recollection or anything that the county has helped the local out with. Uh, whereas Hendersonville, I mean, I know they owe us money for their reappraisals. Yeah, I think I don't know if it's seven hundred eight thousand, eight hundred fifty thousand dollars or something. Um, you know, and I, I, there are I know people have had issues with that, so I'm not opposed to helping. You know, Again, yeah, we've, we've given $10 million in infrastructure to Portland and West Portland for water lines and infrastructure improvements. Uh, I'm not opposed to helping the sewer line improvements for Hendersonville. Um, but I, I, you know, I see this as a little bit different for what we're doing. What the request is that I'm asking Millersville is just truly a city who doesn't have the funds. It is a city, and, and, and Hendersville Utility is not a, a Hendersville Utility. It's a, it's, as far as a governmental private entity, it's kind of like White House. And, I'm very familiar with the White House structure from when they were going to use eminent domain, or did use eminent domain uh, for the sewer line, uh, gravity sewer for the schools as well. They, they, they actually were the initiator at the request of the county to do the eminent domain for the Greenway uh, that we got stopped uh, in people's backyards. So it, it's just a, that's why to me it's a little bit of a, it wasn't an apples to apples comparison to be honest with you, of helping a city that is uh, kind of underserved in the same way as West Orleans. Um, is underserved and, and we've helped West more out a lot uh, and things. So I just saw this as an opportunity on the southern end of the county to help in a, in a similar manner. Um, so I think it's definitely a worthy project. Um, again, my original ask was $300,000. That just helps them do the GIS study survey. Um, saw an opportunity for 521 afterwards. Um, that would actually help them do that competing matching grant to actually improve their sewer line infrastructure for their citizens and their residents in uh, the city. So, I mean, it's just a little bit of a different thing. Um, I don't know. It, it, I, I was expecting, I thought it was like $900,000 for the years of last. I didn't know it was 1.75, so it's a little bit of a sticker shot to me uh, when that asked. And, I don't know. Uh, so, my, my problem with both projects is I just don't feel like I know enough about them. I know that Millersville is an issue of yeah. when it rains. It, it gets over capacity, so they're, they're having leakage from manholes that are below the water level when, when they have storms. The Hendersonville thing, I didn't know if that was a renovation or, or a new pipeline, and it's uh, obviously a new pipeline. I think, in retrospect, I probably should have made a motion to defer just so that we could understand better what they're trying to accomplish. And, I, I mean, on the Planning Commission, we are in favor of developing in, 
industry and commercial, and, and that's what the Hendersonville pipeline proposes. So I, I don't know where to go with this. But I, I'm I would like to see more numbers and plans and things, but that's just the way I work. I'm kind of a I like the motion to suspend the rules because I have. Well, he, he was in Q's and Q's. Go ahead. I, I've got to point out a couple of procedural problems there. One is the continued discussion. And the other is you can't just lump those two together. You'll have to have one of the prevailing side reconsider the motion for Hendersonville and then pull it. So, uh, and then you can retable that one and uh, bring. Well, then I, so that said, let me fix my, because I don't want to be procedurally wrong here. I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. <coughs> I don't care that uh, that Hendersonville's got shot down. I hope so. I hope somebody brings it up from the floor. That's what I hope. But it has to be. Well, 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 I, well, hold on. No, I, 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 I want to help out people. I want to help out people in Millersville. I just want to help people out. We got 2.8 million dollars. We need to appropriate it. I don't want to see that money go back up to the feds. We got two projects here. I'd like to see them both get done. People don't want to help out Hendersonville. That's okay. I get it. They're good. Right? It's not, and that's not totally fair. I get to all the arguments, but at the end of the day, all the stuff that's going back and forth with Hendersonville and they owe us this. They're, they're, the regular human being who's like paying for their their water bill is not the devil here. So, I, and the same thing up for the regular human being who's who's up in Millersville. Like I, we've got this funds. I don't want to give them back to the feds. Even though uh, the folks down in Hendersonville, you know, we we apparently vote against that, I'm still going to vote for this. So I'm still going to make a motion for five hundred twenty-one thousand dollars. But it has to be said that the little guy is getting screwed by turning down Hendersonville. And I'm tired. I'm not just saying I'm tired of this nitpicking crap going oh, on. Right. Order, Mr. Chair, no, no, I mean, wait, 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 wait. You wait, 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 with a part of a government like Gallatin in a garage and take it with that. Do not lump these little guys, respectfully I say that, into this pissing contest going on with government. We did it, you've seen it happen last Monday with the ask for the antenna on a tower. Who is that screwing? It's screwing the little guy out there doing the work, getting on the radio to try to radio back to dispatch if that antenna dis deteriorates. That's what's happening. Just getting it out on the open in the record because that I, I just can't be silent anymore. I'm not going to support, I'm just, I can't support one and we, not the other. We got a second? We don't have a second motion. Yeah, I restated the motion for 520,000, 520, just the 521,000 for Millersville. Because I motion and second. Okay, go ahead. I would like to suspend the rule. Okay, motion to suspend the rule. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, go ahead. I would like to uh, tell the court story because I'm going to go on the interim city manager and want to just briefly give a synopsis of kind of what we're Thank you. 
I'll go ahead and make the motion again. So I would like to make a motion for $1.75 million uh, to expand the Hendersonville second. motion in second. Uh, let me go ahead and state it fully. $1.75 million of ARPA funds uh, from uh, ARPA Pure uh, to, excuse me, well, proper. proper. I keep saying it wrong. They qualify for proper. Uh, assuming it qualifies for proper, uh, to expand uh to assist with expansion of phase two sewage line off of West Main. Is that, you go to the second? All right, there's a second. Any further discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. One no. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, it will now because we have, didn't have a, uh, didn't have the unanimous. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, could we get more information on the Henderson bill? So it's going to be a second reading. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, so we can mention, yeah. If we can have a full plan that's schematic for that, she's between now and the next one. So, so, you might ask if the city's contributed to AR. Okay. Um, so, there. so, so actually, we never did, we may be procedurally wrong here. We never did uh, dispose of the $521,000. i am going to go ahead and put this one back on the table. Motion for five hundred twenty-one thousand uh, dollars. Millersville. Motion in a second. Any further discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries as unanimous. Will these come to the floor at the same time? Uh, well, actually, mine will have a second reading. They may not because one passed unanimously and one did not. Well, you have to vote it. Are you going to vote? Yeah, this one needs to be that needs to, to be in the motion. I'll, I'm going to make that to make uh, to have. Uh, actually, it will affect my vote if they're well, not. Then, the then let's just leave it as it is. The They'll be on there at the same time. So just, it'll it'll require a second reading still. So both, both are going to come back. Both are going to come back here. Both have a second reading. So, all right. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Lawrence. Titles A and B are free payments. Anytime we have free payments, that means it's appropriation in a future year. It should require county's commission's approval. That's what item A and B is. Okay. Um, so I'd entertain a motion. I mean, we can group and approve these. Yes. Uh, I'd entertain motion group and approve. Motion group and approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I don't probably see the month contract. Well, go ahead. On this. Uh, so I'll, I'll do it again. Second. I'll wait a second reading. Is the second? Did you wait a second reading? Second's good with it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, Any opposed? This was for 4A and B, the group and approved. All right, General Sessions, want to quote for the copiers? 60 months. My understanding is a 60 month lease for a copier because it's a multi year contract where it requires approval from the county commission. And I need to get the copying business. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's on state contract. lease for a freaking copy. It's on a state contract, so they have no choice. I know. I, I mean, <laughs> it used to be a lease. All right. I'm going to make a motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's just two copiers. Because our copies are five years old, one's for probation and one is for general sessions. It'll access the we're paying $173 a month right now and getting brand new copiers for when we move into the new courthouse. It'll cost us $81. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Uh, oh, well, just, just yours. You want to do the second reading? Wait a second. Wait a second, second reading. Second's good with it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I feel like I'm a going fast here. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to group and approve. All right. Motion to group and approve. Well, we haven't got this one yet. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right.